Hey, Mr. Z, how are you? Hey, Mr. B, I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, good. Ready to talk about some streams here. I'm getting excited. All right, so we got a couple learning targets here. Again, look at them beforehand. You should know a little bit about them, but then at the end of the video, you should be able to do these five things, okay? So make sure you can touch base on these, and these are things you can do. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing that we're going to talk about is stream gradient. And I'm sure most of you have seen rivers at some point in time before, especially the ones uh, near school. And uh, you've noticed that the river and the water is always moving, and mm -hmm. it's moving in some kind of direction. And what's causing that movement is that it is on a hill, or there's a gradient there. So we measure gradient by the difference in elevation over a given distance. Mm -hmm. And it's just like in math class. It's just the slope of the river. So you can see uh, we've got two streams, one on the upper left, one on the bottom right. Which one looks like it's a steeper gradient to you, Mr. Yeah, Steve? that one on the upper left does. Yeah. And you'll see a lot more of these like fast-flowing rapids and steeper gradients. You might see uh, some, like with those white caps that are mm -hmm. moving uh, the water around. But on the right, it looks pretty flat. It does, yeah. yeah. It does. And really just rise over run, just like you would measure slope in math class. It's the exact same equation. Perfect. All right. All right, so we talked about discharge in the last one. Now we'll really define it here. So discharge is just the velocity of the stream mm -hmm. times the cross-sectional area. Yeah, and the cross-sectional area is going to be the width of the stream, and then it's kind of an average of the depth underneath because it's not always the same. It's not perfectly square. Um, and we're going to actually do that in a lab to where we take a bunch of different averages of depths and given parts of the stream in like this virtual lab, and we'll get a lot more experience with that. But overall, the equation itself, you're calculating the discharge by multiplying the velocity times the cross-sectional area. Okay, pretty straightforward. So it's just the amount of water passing through at a given time. Yep. All right, so when the river's flowing, I mean, you've seen rivers pick things up, and we're mm -hmm. going to talk about the different types of things that they pick up. Yeah, and a lot of times, I'm sure if you've gone to the Des Plaines River or even the north branch of the Chicago River, like, you can't see to the bottom. Like, mm -hmm. there's stuff inside of it, and some people think that it's just polluted, but uh, that's actually not the case. There's a lot of stuff floating around in there that's natural, and a lot of it's supposed to be there, and it's being transported by the river. So like some of the first stuff, that's some of the easier things to think about. It's called the bed load. Yeah. And it's some of the larger particles that are basically just bouncing along and rolling around the bottom of the stream. Exactly. And these are things that are going to be depending on the velocity of the water itself, because if the velocity increases, the force increases, but it's usually bigger material. We're talking larger rocks, gravel, etc., that just kind of sit there on the river bottom, and they will move in this kind of like jumping or bouncing fashion called saltation. And that doesn't happen all the time. Maybe it was a flood event or the velocity increase and now it's beginning to transport and move or sometimes they just sit there. Mm -hmm. right. So the next part, this is kind of where you see that muddy water is that suspended load. Okay, So this is just sediment that's basically just being picked up. It's floating, or not floating, sorry, it's in suspension and uh, it's not dissolved. Yeah. So if the water were to settle and calm down, everything in that suspended load would start to settle out. Exactly. And we talked a lot about that going back to the sedimentary environments, back to deltas and things like that. When we looked at different sedimentary rocks, um, we talked about rivers losing velocity and then starting to deposit uh, the different loads um, in certain environments. And a lot of times the suspended load is usually like finer particles. Um, clays, silts, etc. And sometimes if the river has a lot of velocity, even sand could be in suspension. Nice. Uh, now this last load we got is the dissolve load. Okay, so think of like your minerals or your salts that are dissolved into the water. Even if the water stops flowing, they're not going to settle out. They're mixed exactly. in. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a salty water solution in there. Exactly. Okay. So here's actually a really cool picture of the suspended load. Uh, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, it's where two rivers are meeting. Now, which one looks like it has a higher suspended load to you, Mr. Z? Uh, the one down here at the bottom left, or we're looking at the top oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, between these two guys yeah. right up here. Yeah, so if you can see the 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 one that's, I guess, in the middle, that <laughs> seems like it's connecting to the one that's on the right, you can see that the one uh, has a lot more sediment that it's transporting compared to the one that's on the top right. but these two rivers are joining together and they're actually mixing uh, with each other. And we said what river it was. Which rivers uh, are these? The one on the left uh, in this top picture is uh -huh. the Missouri. They call it the Big Muddy. 
Got it. Uh, and then this is the Mississippi, and it actually takes about 70 miles for those two rivers wow. to completely mix up. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, a couple of definitions here that we want to talk about. One is the competence of a stream or a river, right? And this is the largest thing or the largest sediment size that can be transported. Yeah, so if you look at the stream on the left, it doesn't look like it's really moving that fast. Do you think it's yeah. going to be picking up really large boulders or anything? No, it's not. Yeah, but the one on the right, like, that's where you've got, like, boulders the size of cars that are getting moved around. Probably, yeah, and we can see that one is obviously moving a lot faster, and if we're thinking about the, the, the current being stronger, then we know that the force behind the water itself is probably strong and able to move things that are larger. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the competence of the river on the right is more than the river on the left. Now, a slightly, really similar term is called the capacity, and it's just the total amount of sediment that can be transported, okay? Yep. So the one on the left, it's not really picking up that much sediment. It's not moving that fast. But if mm -hmm. you start increasing your velocity, you'll start picking up more sure. and more sediment. Exactly. I think that's it. And that's all we got here, guys. So head back to your class website, and uh, there should be a quiz waiting for you. Yeah, and go back and visit those learning targets. See you later, guys. Take care.